Hello everyone. In the last video, uh, we just uh, concluded the setup analysis with uh, single clocks and ideal clocks as well. And uh, the specifications that we had was uh, t equals a uh, t uh, clock period was one nanosecond. The setup uncertainty, the setup time of the flop was 10 picoseconds, and setup uncertainty was 90 picoseconds. In this uh, video, or in this uh, in this series of two to three uh, videos, what we will be doing is we'll be doing setup analysis for multiple clocks. By multiple clocks, I mean the launch will be uh, the the, uh, the data will be launched by a different clock and will be captured by a different clock. So there is a separate set of logic that uh, goes while analyzing uh, this kind of circuits. So without wasting any time, let's uh, let's begin. So let us very first uh, define the specifications uh, for us. So the uh, so uh, since it is multiple clocks, one of the clock period let us uh, keep it as one nanosecond, or the clock one. Uh, uh, clock one was the uh, same pin through which we we were supplying clock in the examples that we were looking into. So let the, let one of the clocks be one nanosecond. Basically, the period is uh, one nanosecond, and the let the second clock be of one point five nanoseconds. Just an example, we are taking how to do the analysis uh, when there are uh, multiple clocks. So this is an example uh, specifications that we are taking uh, uh, as uh, uh, for our uh, for the for, for, for our explanation purpose. So let's do it. Let's uh, uh, so the specifications is uh, uh, first clock will be of a clock period one nanosecond, and the second one will be of one point five nanosecond, and the uh, and the remaining uh, uh, remaining parameters like setup uncertainty and the setup time of the flop. Let let us uh, keep it um, uh, same as before. Let's draw the scenario over here. Let's draw the circuit over here first. So this is uh, what we are uh, talking about. The uh, launch flop uh, has the launch. Uh, the data is launched by a clock called as clock one, whereas the data is captured by a clock called as clock two. Basically, the clock one has got a period of one nanosecond, and clock two has got a period of uh, one point five nanosecond. So this is the scenario that we have. And, uh, and the combinational logic and let, let us keep the combinational logic and the uh, and the theta as uh, a, a same as before so theta is the theta is the combinational delay uh, from uh, from clock to q as well as wires and uh, and all those things just as we did it for the last time so let 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 us not change theta let us change only the launch clock and the capture clock what we'll do is now we'll we'll draw the clock waveforms uh, for the sake of simplicity. So uh, the the clock one is being given zero to one nanosecond. The clock one period is zero to one nanosecond, and clock two uh, period is zero to uh, one point five nanoseconds. This is this is our scenario. So the once we once we look into this circuit, the first the very first uh, uh, thing that comes into our mind how the data will be launched and how the data will be captured is the data will be launched at zero edge and the data will be captured as at 1.5 nanosecond at this particular edge so this is this is this is partially true but there might be scenarios that there might be conditions where this thing is not true this this could be one of the conditions uh, at which uh, data is uh, launched and captured there uh, might be some other conditions also so let us try to understand what all are the uh, possible scenarios under which data will be launched and captured basic setup analysis is uh, you need a launch you need an edge to launch to launch the data and the next uh, and the next edge to capture the data so with with that in mind let's let's do the analysis uh, let us first bring uh, the clocks. Uh, the, let us align the zeroth edge of clock one on clock two, as shown over here. And um, and now no, no, the first step of analysis is to is to expand these clocks. So uh, so let's see that we have to expand these clocks till you find the next common rising edge. So similar to this particular common rising edge, somewhere around some somewhere when we expand the clock in uh, in a time period, we'll find one more edge which is common to clock one and clock two. So let's try to expand both the clocks in this direction in in the right direction so that we find the next uh, common rising edge let us let us do that so we have expanded uh, clock one with one nanosecond from one to two and we have expanded clock two from 1.5 to three that is this is again 1.5 nanosecond more so we have we have yet not find the common rising edge so let us expand it even more so now at three nanoseconds so this is the this is the rising edge at 3 nanosecond of clock 1 and this is the rising edge at 3 nanoseconds of clock 2 so 
at at three nanoseconds we are able to find out a common uh, common rising edge between clock one and clock two. So this is what we wanted. This is the first step in the analysis. We wanted a clock edge where uh, we wanted an edge or we wanted a time period at which both the uh, both the rising edge are aligned after zero nanoseconds. So so one one common rising edge we are finding at zero nanosecond and the other one we are finding at three nanoseconds. This is what we wanted, and this is the first step of the first step of the analysis. Next, what we, we will do is we'll try to find out the launch and capture combinations. By that I mean, so you launch by you launch by one edge, you launch by the first edge, and you capture by the next edge. And in this case, the in this case the edge will be for clock one, and in this case the edge will be for clock two. So let us try to find out those combinations first. So the, the so the, so the very first combination is you launch by this edge, and the next and the next uh, capturing edge will be will be this one, because this is because we, we are uh, we are capturing by clock two and we are launching by clock one. So that that is one combination. So at this uh, uh, so at this point we are able to find out the next common rising edge. So let's move on with the analysis now. What we have to do is we have to find the shortest uh, window. Let, let's uh, let's understand what is what is a window first. So you launch at this edge. This clock goes over here, and you launch at this edge, and you capture at this edge because this is because in the clock two, after zero nanoseconds, this is the next rising next rising edge. So you capture at one point five nanoseconds. So the window that is available for the for 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 this particular combinational logic, or the th value of theta should now be less than one point one point five nanoseconds. Basically, the uh, the, the window is one point five nanoseconds. R r l let us not take the uh, setup time and uncertainty for time being. Let us not consider that. Let us consider a very ideal scenario. So you launch at zero, you capture at one point five. And the window that is available now for you is 1.5 nanosecond. So the combinational delay should be less than 1.5 nanosecond. This is the first scenario that is available. Let us let us look at if we have any other scenarios available. So the next launching edge, edge is this one. Let us look into that. So next, if you if you launch at one nanosecond, the capturing the the, the next clock edge after one nanosecond, or the next uh, rising clock edge after one nanosecond on clock two. On which data could be captured is this one, 1.5 nanoseconds. So, so this, yeah, this is the one. So at one you launch the data, at 1.5 you capture the data on clock two. So the window that is available with us is now of 0.5 nanoseconds. So basically here I mean that in this in this scenario, theta should be less than 0.5 nanoseconds. So this is the second this is the second possible option. Now let us let us look into the third option. So third is uh, uh, you launch uh, you launch the data at two nanosecond, and the next rising edge on clock two at which you can capture is is th is three nanosecond. So this is the next rising edge that you have on the uh, capture clock. So now uh, the the window that is available is one nanosecond. Again. This means that the theta should be less than one nanosecond. So out of the uh, and, and next we can't uh, move on further because three nanosecond was the w was the point at which uh, we found the next common uh, next uh, uh, we found the common rising edge. So we should not uh, uh, we should not move ahead. We should uh, uh, stop at uh, this point because because if, if if you even move ahead you will find. You you will find these three combinations only. You you won't find any other combinations other than these three because because this is this is the edge at which we are uh, we are finding the next uh, which, at which we are finding the common rising edge. So it will replicate basically. So so in this in the in all three cases, what we found was the minimum the minimum window that was available with us was 0.5 nanosecond, and this condition is very well possible on a on an SOC on a chip. Basically, all the three conditions are possible, but this is the worst case scenario that we have on the on a, on a chip. So, whatever analysis we do, we have to we have to take care of this scenario of this scenario. So, so what we'll do is we'll uh, uh, we'll, we'll we'll stop at this point. Uh, since I'm running out of time, we'll stop at this point. We'll I'll, I'll talk more about the shortest window that is available with us, uh, that is launching at one and uh, capturing at one point five, and we'll we'll find out what what should be the value of theta when if we consider this particular shortest window. Or maybe you can take it as a as a as a homework for you uh, for you so that uh, you can find out what could be the value of theta. 
if if we consider this particular uh, if the, if we consider this particular uh, window as the, as the uh, most uh, worst case window so let's let's uh, uh, derive that equation in the in the next video thank you